50 years ago, the world's technology looked completely different. Computers were both rare and the size of rooms. And there were maybe, well, three TV channels. Phones were firmly bound to the walls and featured no voicemail. And the average person rarely left their local area, much less their state or country. And nowadays, of course, computers are ubiquitous and portable. The choices for televised entertainment reach into the thousands. And it's easier than ever to zoom from one end of the world to the next. So what will the next 50 years bring? There's obviously no way to know for sure, but based on today's trends, there's plenty of possibilities. Let's take a look at what we can expect the world to become over the next half century. Quantum computing. Today's super smart computers are ridiculously powerful, but the way things are going, they look downright quaint. And that's because the next generation of computing and quantum computers is on the way. And that will revolutionize how we compute in ways today's machines can only dream of. In a nutshell, a quantum computer can combine zeros and ones of binary computing into an infinite different combinations called quibits. This means a quantum computer can process information at speeds unheard of today's computers. This could be both a good thing and an extremely foreboding thing. To play the pessimist, quantum computers are so fast and so complex that they can possibly hack countless passwords within seconds, possibly even milliseconds. That's not bad news for your Gmail account. That's just bad news for national security. Government passwords, missile launch codes, and so many other government secrets would need constant adjusting to keep up with the bad people wielding quantum computers. It almost makes one hope physics professor, Mikhail Diakonov, is correct when he predicts that quantum computers are simply too complex to ever become practical or mainstream. Then again, that's what the experts thought about computers of today. Computers in your bloodstream. Remember when computers were the size of walk-in closets? Now we can fit an entire computer into a phone that slides in and snugs into your pocket. What's more, we actually have some computers that are so small that they can fit into our bodies and work to fight diseases such as Parkinson's. But we're not stopping there. Within 50 years, and quite possibly sooner, we'll likely shrink the technology even further to the point that we can get it straight into our blood. The potential for machines smaller than blood cells is enormous. We can send them into disease bloodstreams, and thanks to wireless technology, commanded from the outside to deliver medicine directly to the source, fighting off any disease that really threatens our precious blood. Cancer, AIDS, bloodborne STDs, and so many other destroyers of lives could be ancient history soon enough. Thanks to technology previously thought possible only in the magic school bus books. Air travel will be so much more awesome. Air travel is just over 100 years old and has evolved at an extremely rapid pace, but there's still a lot more that can be improved. That means flying around in 2070 will be so much better than in 2020. Some of the possibilities include automatically shifting seats based on how many people are on the plane, which would solve the number one complaint of air travel, not enough leg room. While this idea may only work when flights aren't completely booked, it's only a matter of time before we figure out how to adjust the seats to satisfy the legs on a fully booked plane. Beyond that, the biggest change would be the simple speed. The first planes could only go a few miles per hour, whereas today's planes, passenger planes, and etc. can reach speeds close to 600 miles per hour. There's no reason to think that in 50 years, we'll be going even faster, and we may be able to go from one end of the world to another in just a few hours, and we'll certainly be able to fly across country in no time flat, even if when it's a large nation like the United States. As for improving in-flight meals and making the bathroom bigger and those kind of challenges may require a couple more centuries. Saying goodbye to grocery shopping. Many of us despise grocery shopping, especially on busy weekends, and so more and more grocers offer online shopping to combat this hatred of actually going to their store. But soon enough, that will seem to be old-fashioned. There's a good chance that the refrigerator technology will just become as smart as the rest of your house, to the point where your icebox will know what's inside of it and essentially shop for you. Your fridge and freezer might be wirelessly connected to your Whole Foods account or whatever, and so once it senses that you're running low on butter, bananas, ground beef, or anything else you program it to do, it will automatically order you some more, as a driver would simply just bring you everything and voila, instant restock fridge. There's no reason to think such wireless connectivity wouldn't work for dry food either. Your cuppers, your pantries, and cabinets could all be equipped with sensors and cameras designed to let your favorite market know when you're low on a can of beans or pasta or whatever else your stomach desires. As far as getting the money to pay for said groceries, you'll still be on your own for that. Holographic bosses, virtual workspaces, movies, a plenty of time that showcase holographic technology, whether it be virtual sergeants calling into the war room or Princess Leia informing Obi-Wan Kenobi of the RTD2 that he's her only hope, real life holograms really do exist. Though they're mainly archival footage of music stars like Tupac that seem to make it as if we're watching them live. Soon enough though, there's going to be all kinds of technology that won't be confined to fictional entertainment. Holograms will become ubiquitous to the point that where your boss may be able to conduct meetings with no employees present. That's already a possibility thanks to Skype and other such meeting apps and programs, but the next level would be to involve your boss virtually appearing in your home via a hologram and speaking to you live. That would make telecommunicating already an increasingly popular activity a reality for so many more workers. The only downside 
five would be micromanaging bosses who are hologramming into your living room every five minutes to make sure that you're working and not watching the price is right instead oh man man and machine will merge and we may live forever the average human life expectancy keeps rising thanks to the advances in technology medicine and food preservation soon enough technology may be improved to the point that where we could live indefinitely and stay healthy the entire time by that i don't mean that we die with our consciousness and it gets transferred into another robot body that's still science fiction and we will likely won't be seeing that for a long time however the technology we already use likely will improve to the point where aging and death will become mere options nanotechnology and nanobots combined with rapid advances in stem technology will work hard to stave off diseases fix brittle bones and weaken organs and even replicate cells when biology no longer wants us to as the brain dulls the same technology could be used to wake it up keep us fresh and vibrant in both body and mind as well into our late thousands even beyond simple de-aging nanotech could improve our bodies in other ways if we weren't born naturally athletic or musically inclined or a scientific genius tech that rewires the brain and body could make it that a possible reality no longer will you need to toil endlessly at the piano or physics books to master those fields all you need to do is visit your doctor and tell the machines to do their magic traveling will be completely different i mentioned advances in air travel recently but there's so much more to the future of travel than just our cars which have gone from glorified buggies to sleek and smart super vehicles and this will change dramatically in the next 50 years and for the better the single best change will be driveless cars which is already a thing able to be a prototype in stages companies like uber are experimenting with driverless vehicles and they also have a ton of potential to be safer than vehicles controlled by silly humans right now the technology is primitive and many driverless cars simply fail at anything besides basic navigation but soon enough uber and likely many other tech companies will get these cars able to communicate with one another and able to drive a driveless car safer than ever it'll also be more economically viable for you can make money renting your own driveless car out of uber to save money by forgoing vehicle ownership and just use the driveless ubers to get around if you go that route you can make even more money by renting out your garage for other driverless vehicles to park and recharge more money no driving and zero road rage all signs pointing to drivers in 2070 looking back at 2020 drivers and wondering how in the world did they survive 3d printing will print everything including houses and cars 3d printers are real and they're spectacular they can print some amazing things even like full life-size guitars phone holders coffee cups shoes medical models dental appliances and even working guns but in the near future they'll be able to print so much more and anyone will be able to do so currently full-size printers are out of many people's price ranges they can go from several thousand dollars to upwards to 70 grand but within the next few decades large printers will drop drastically in price as all technology does anyway remember the first laptops cost you almost $1,800 in 1981 or $5,000 in today's money soon enough large 3d printers can create just about anything and will probably run you a couple hundred bucks at most and when that happens you'll be able to literally print almost anything in the entire world using materials such as rubber metal even titanium you may be able to download the materials to print anything you need food cars houses even medicine will be a mere print out of way the only real question is how far can we go can we someday print real living beings perhaps even humans yeah don't expect that within the next 50 years but it may not be an impossibility forever checkups will be conducted by a cell phone we should all know that you should visit your doctor for regular checkups except doing so often is sometimes so inconvenient anyway so you might take off time from work get a babysitter for the kids usually the easiest solution is simply not to go but we need doctors and checkups and so thankfully technology is making it a lot easier to do so without having to go anywhere apps already exist and are improving all the time that can essentially give you a full body checkup with the comfort of your own home these apps can test your heart blood saliva lungs and analyze your cough for any possible abnormalities it's only going to get better too and it's very possible that within a few decades apps will be able to scan your body like an airport x-ray and automatically send your results to your doctor if there's anything wrong the doctor will inform you combine that with your 3d printer assembling your medicine for you and your living room now has become both your doctor's office and pharmacy the scanning technology as with all testing apps previously mentioned already exists but it's not ready for anything resembling public use but eventually it will both the public and the medical community will embrace it as the future it'll be easy convenient and he won't have to deal with waiting in the room the world population will exceed 9 billion all this grand technology is wonderful but if the world itself doesn't change somehow it may not matter much within 50 years experts predict that our planet population will increase to 9.4 billion people that some feel as much as earth can handle the problem is people 
population is also a dangerously high population. Though we obviously don't know for sure what will happen, but there's a good chance by 2070, a population of almost 9 billion and a half will suffer more diseases due to overcrowding. And a huge issue since there's too many people requiring too much heat and electricity for Earth may not have enough to go around. There's another related endless debate issue as well. Global warming, if trends don't change, our world 50 years from now might look drastically different. Bodies of water like the Dead Sea might be um, well, appropriately enough dead and may have little to no rainforest remaining in the world and polar ice caps will be barely half of what they are today. And ensuing the dryness of our world could cause wildfires and make 2018 California fires seem like fun and games. So if we don't take care of our planet and all our 3D printers and self 